when I wake up in the morning, I'm in my nighty and I have two carers come in every morning and they um, take me to the shower chair um, where they give me a shower, wash my hair, then dry me and use a hair dryer. I can move this one just a little, um, but nothing, nothing at all from like here down. That's where the injury is. How do you go to the toilet? Um, I go to the toilet um, for number twos every second day. That's trained. Um, and for number ones, I um, I have a super pubic catheter, which is goes straight to my bladder, and it drains all the time into a bag down my leg which people empty um, at the appropriate time. It's pretty frustrating because I used to be quite particular about my hair. Uh, well, still am a bit. And um, especially when the carers aren't really hairdressers and give me bad hair days quite often, like uh, they are watching this, are they? <laughs> no, um, they do a very good job. <laughs> the lap, my best, not my best friends, so they bad. They become my family, yeah, they're really close. Yeah. This is a safety harness that I have, which, because I'm a little bit vain, I try and hide um, a little bit. But that's to keep me in my chair so because I have no waist control if I fall forward I can't do anything I can't drive I'm stuck there and someone has got to find me but I like to disappear so I could be anywhere of my accident, which I'm about to take you over to. Yeah, I was just coming home, it was about 10 o'clock at night. I was in the middle of vintage and I was pretty tired. She must have went to sleep just past our gate there and went off on the gravel and that must have woke her up. So she did a, like you, we all oh, would do, correct. overreacted and the car went the opposite direction. And then for some unknown reason, I don't really know why, it went in reverse at exactly the same speed. And they revived me um, and I died again when my lungs collapsed um, a week later. But they induced me in a coma for two weeks. The scarring of her neck is where if they put a steel plate in, they had to give her a bit more support. To keep her breathing, they had to put a tracking her neck. I think they call it a tracheoscomy or something. This is Ginny when she was uh, 25, just before her accident, showing off her good legs. <laughs> Working hard and playing, playing hard. hard. <laughs> Love people. I used to be uh, very fit and a hockey player and a rouseabout and my whole life was fitness, sport, tennis, and now it's computer work. Dictate mode, dear, loosened out. School, come on. New line. Choose two. Enter. A lot of people that sort of keep on calling on her and still friends. A lot of them have drifted off, of course, as you would expect. And there's even some that's never come to see her, couldn't face up to it. We went through some rough days. Oh, just seeing her struggle with some things and... and seeing her uh, girlfriends all marrying and having babies. And, and her accepting that um, she was gonna have her rest of her life in a wheelchair. She thought she had to use a, 
a chin control and she said no way am I having a chin control. I'm not spastic. <laughs> this is my place and where I hang out as well. The spirit she's got is um, some... Uh, <laughs> I guess for me, the night of the accident, um, I knew there was a, um, somebody hurt not knowing it was our own daughter and as I got into bed I said to, to God, whoever it is, please keep them alive, not knowing it was my own daughter. And I believe God kept her alive. For a purpose. For a purpose. Well, we and what, and <laughs> she's... She's had to learn and a different talents have come out and I'm just thankful we still got her.